welcome back. It's Christina again with the Artist Pod, and today we're going to talk about how to draw a chinchilla. So, let's get arting. All right. So this is the chinchilla, um, and he's got a couple different colors. It's got like a light gray, whitish kind of off white, and then a darker gray. So we're just gonna hop right in. Like always, you know, mixing in the strokes so that I'm, I'm um, putting one stroke in between others, starting with this light gray. They can be pretty fluffy, although, like usual, the hair by the nose is the shortest, so this is where the strokes will be the shortest. And then they have a discernible dip in their mouth here to the rest of the face, and then kind of another one here. So I'll be creating a couple of those lines out for it. Now a lot of this up here is actually a mix of the light and the dark. It's like a, a gray mix kind of all through, almost like a marbled kind of texture. And so I'm going to go ahead and put the light, but I'm also going to be putting the dark all through here too. All right, so now we're going to get the dark going. There's some areas that are distinctively just dark, which is what, you know, this current section is, like this area on the nose. Um, and then there's a lot of areas where it's just kind of a mix of, of both will make um, adding highlights more interesting. I am going to have the um, light source coming in from over here. Again, um, I know I always say this, but that means that I'm going to have it coming from above and in front of just to help, you know, you sort of decide the light source based on what's going to give your subject the most um, pop. And I'm going to start with the dark gray because that's going to be easier to lay a darker, a lighter color on a darker color to sort of marble it uh, than a darker color on a lighter color. At least I, I think that's how that's going to work. I know some cases it's not as straightforward, but or that I've done it the other way, but we'll see how this goes. Now the way I'm going to mix it in, and this is going to be a little bit of an experiment, is I'm going to hold, I'm not going to put full pin pressure, I'm putting a lot, I'm putting this, the strokes together, but I'm not putting full pin pressure through here. I think if I took off this layer, you can kind of see the color difference right from here, where there's a clearly, this is a darker color. Um, up into here, um, into this section. I'm not putting as much pin pressure. Putting the strokes pretty close together, but what that should allow me to do is um, give me flexibility to add in another color to create that sort of marbled texture. Be easier to do on um, the back side where in the shadow, I'm not adding a lot of pin pressure anyway. I just have to make sure that I don't accidentally turn an area into a highlight. And then in some of these darker bands, I'll put the pin pressure back up and sort of fluctuate. Now by their eyes, not only is there a little bit of a lighter color here um, right by their, their faces, but um, there's like a bulge in their eyes, a distinctive you know edge, kind of like there is by the mouth. So that creates another natural end point. All right, now let's add in this lighter color and this will really lighten it up quick where it should.
Now, on a lot of animals, animals like this, you know, his cheek over here is still going to have some highlight um, because the nose doesn't fully block it at this point. Um, it's like taking a ball, and at what point would the ball turn into shadow? But you also um, want to think of it as an individual circle, right? You have a, a circle and a circle and a ball. And so you have a little bit of bulging here that happens because it's its own circle within the bigger shape of the of the nose. Because of that, there's going to be a little bit of highlight that hits the cheek. Not putting full pin pressure, but I am obviously picking it up. And then it would all be, or at least most of it's going to be in shadow down here. In fact, I think all of it would be, even though this is his chin, the way his head's positioned, he's dipped so far down, I don't think his chin would catch much light. And then, of course, the edge is always in shadow. And this side, of course, would be in shadow because it's the shadowed side. And then, of course, still adding in that lighter, that mix of both grays through the forehead. Just making sure that it all balances out. Their ears are dark with the exception of some, you know, white tufts in here. So we're going to go ahead and just finish these out. And then of course when you're doing ears, thinking about the shape, you know, with the light source coming from above and to the right, you know, the back side here is going to be in shadow, whereas this is probably going to be picking up highlight right up in here, where that edge is, but again, all all edges are in shadow, so just this edge would be in shadow, but you would kick immediate into immediate highlight before it goes into shadow on that back side. And then they have their ears. The ears are dark going in. We'll feather this out. So overlapping strokes, but small. The hair on the ears is going to be um, typically also smaller if you can see the hair. Kind of depends on the animal, but it would be similar to like a squirrel or maybe a rabbit. Um, you can sometimes on rats, but sometimes all you see on rats is the pink because the hair is so thin. So on small rodent-like animals, oftentimes you'll have this effect where the hair on the ears is short, small, assuming you can't see the pink. Um, often you can, but sometimes you can't. So we'll have it just very light, and then we'll give it a little bit of a burst. In this upper section, where it would be catching the light, but we're going to fade it pretty quickly as it comes down. Give this a little bit of a burst, but allow the shadow to kick in because we want it to give the illusion it's getting dark as it goes into the ear. A little bit of a burst through here as well. And then we'll taper that off. Now the white will kick in through here, but sometimes layering up effects can be effective. I think that gives pretty good definition to his ear. Now on this side would be the reverse of that, right? Shadow or um, highlights coming from above and to the right. So it's more likely this is going to be in highlight. This is still going to be in shadow because it's rounding away, but this edge is going to be in shadow as opposed to highlight. So the highlight's going to be more centered towards the back side of the ear instead of the front. All right, so this would have highlight. Being mindful too, as the head dips, um, depends on the animal. If the ear dips down, um, there'll be a little bit of a shadow before the highlight kicks in. But um, that does, it's definitely very dependent on what animal, as to how far their, their um, ears are dipping down before it's kicking back into highlight. Um, on this side, 
we're going to have a little bit more of an extreme shadow because it's on that shadowed side. But we want to make sure it's still full. I'm putting very light pin pressure here. And it might still be catching some light, particularly you know on this edge because it's far enough away from this dip. But it won't be much. Enough to give it definition. So I'm not putting a lot of pin pressure. Now when you do this, something I've learned over time, you do want to connect in this top, right? Like up here, up here. You want to make sure these strokes are connecting in because the recess is happening down in here. Um, and so you want to make sure that's clear, that it's going into that recess. And if you leave it at the top, sometimes it doesn't work. But just spreading these strokes out is all you're going to need to do. So not how well that works, but we're going to give it a little extra burst here. Right through here. Might be picking up some light just a little bit and fading off. Definitely gives that illusion. I'm going to give a little bit of extra light to this side because this is the side that's in highlight so that ear would be catching more light. I just want to make sure that's clear. And the other thing I'm going to do is tighten up this edge. <clears throat> I don't think it's bad, but you can see on the other side it's I have nice really tight strokes. Gives a lot of extra definition to the ear. And if I do it on one side, in order for it to look balanced, you really kind of want to do it on both. We're going to take the same color, the same light color, and do some ear tufts. All right, we just want to fill it in, have some white coming up. I'm doing it lightly, and then I'll add some definition to it. Maybe not that much. So it's going to have some bursts at the tip going into shadow on the other side. And if you can have it a little messy, that can help, especially when you're doing ear, sort of ear tufts like this. You want to mimic the same thing on the other side. So the same amount, right? Um, but the back side won't be in highlight. It's going to be this middle section, if at all, which I think there would be and have it, you know, go into shadow. You don't want it be you don't want it to be too much. So it's going to have a shadow on the on the underside where it goes into the ear and on the top. The other thing I don't want is a jarring transition. <laughs> okay. This is looking pretty cute. Now, I am going to mess it up just a little bit just like I did with the other cuz you want kind of that effect where the the hair is long enough it's kind of going in different places. I'm just going to smooth out some of these highlights. Under his eye, we're going to give him just a little bit of highlight here. And I don't want it to be too much. Alright, so now we have the nose. Now into the pink section, I left it just, um, oops left it just pink. There would be some hair pushing up in here, so I am going to do that, but I'm going to add the highlights and shadows to the nose first, and then we'll put the hair on top. There's also a few dips in their noses. There's a dip here, and then underneath where there'd be a shadow where the nose kind of dips down there. And then, of course, as it's going into the nostril, it would be in shadow. Such a small space, I'm just going to lightly do it all first. And then add the highlights where I think it's appropriate. Now, just like the ears, the nose is an opportunity underneath to add, you know, a recess, right? So, like, we could push some of this in and just keep it spread out, and it's going to give that illusion of, like, light catching. So there'd be highlight right through here. 
leaving the space underneath or the nostrils rounding down and then checkering off here where it goes into shadow and then kicking back in over here where that same angle would give it a burst of highlight again leaving underneath and then going back into shadow as it rounds away likewise underneath there's going to be a little bit of highlight um, under here again the hair is going to be there so I'm not going to do too much it's going to dip down and then there might be a little bit over here as well and then we're going to add some hair it's going to be short we're going to add the darker as well since there's this line of like dark around the nose it would make sense have some of the darker hair kick in too. And at the top. Do it. Alright, so now we're gonna add some whiskers and then we'll do the little light flare. Again with chinchillas, like the last few we've done actually, I guess we've that's been happening a lot. Um I'm gonna do just the light flare because it's harder to see. A lot of rodents will, will have this too. It's harder to see their eye color, and so I'll leave it with just the light flare. So when I'm doing whiskers right, I'm just kind of bunching them together, sort of spreading them out, not putting full pin pressure, making sure I'm kind of coming underneath if that's what they do, coming around, coming up, moving my arm at the shoulder. They have quite a lot. Their whiskers are pretty long, but I didn't want to sacrifice the size of the head for the whiskers, and so I didn't. But their whiskers go out pretty far. Now, whatever I do on one side, I need to do on the other, right? So we have some coming underneath, so we need some under. Whenever we have one line somewhere too, we need to bunch it as well. So we have a bunch sort of spreading out, coming all the way up to here. So we just need to mimic that. That bunching again, not full pin pressure, keeping it light and loose strokes. Yeah, I think that adds actually quite a lot. And now, we're gonna do, um, first we're gonna fix something real fast. I'm just gonna fix his connection through his eye here. And yes, it's going in shadow, but that seemed, there's a pretty big gap. No. Again, that little, almost teardrop shape. Oh, I did that reversed. <laughs> And then what we're going to do, after I have what I think is a good size and good placement, I think I'm going to move this guy and turn him just a little bit. Sometimes if I turn him, it's always that I don't quite feel like I have I think that works. All right. So what we're going to do on this side, because he has a lot of fur jutting forward, is we're going to come in here. We're going to add some fur blocking the eye and erase it out. So we can layer that up. So all I'm doing, right, is I'm making these jagged lines as if it's fur with the select tool. Yeah, there. And there we go. There's a chinchilla. All right, so that is how you draw a chinchilla. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.